Hello and welcome to another writing video from Rebecca. So I'm going to talk about the description, whether you have too much or too little. There's, here's a quick tip. Add some poetry to your description. Let it be prose poetry. Ask God to give you ganja, because ganja will inspire you to write something that will speak to people. You have to make sure your voice in your novel, the narrative, is speaking to the reader, teaching some lesson or more, or inspiring someone to feel happy and peaceful and content, moved to tears. So there's such thing as too much dialogue, and there's such thing as too much description. You basically have to find the balance. And I've been doing this for a long time, but I haven't had any books published yet. I haven't, I sent one when I was like in middle school and they said they liked it and I was confused. I didn't send them a letter saying I agreed to their publication because part of me hated that novel. There was only 90 pages and I called it Magic Cuna. And now as a Christian, I hate that novel. I tried to rewrite it many times except called it Cuna. And basically the concept of this novel was there was this girl who was paralyzed in a wheelchair and her grandmother taught her how to walk. And that's a beautiful idea for a story, and when I'm done with the novel, I'm working on Beautiful Madness, and the other two I'm think plotting out and thinking about hunger and, and strange creature. When I'm done with these two novels, I might try to write you know, a story about someone paralyzed whose grandmother or grandfather teaches them how to walk. I think the essence of that story, my, it would be the, my fourth project, would be the wisdom in old women and men who aren't really that elderly, actually. They just grow white hair, have pretty good skin, and they just have a lot of wisdom because they're old. And I'm old. I'm older than you, than what you see, and I'm younger than what you see. So anyways, description. In your description, you want it to be poetic. So think about, say, the ocean. Write about how the ocean feels. That's personification. And write how the woodlands feels. You could write about people's dreams and describe where they go when they're sleeping. Sometimes God sends you places in your sleep. That happens to be a couple of times. And so in my novel, Beautiful Madness, one of my characters, Rose, meets this guy, Liam, and well, I'm making the readers not sure if they know, if, if Rose doesn't know that Liam is real, and Liam doesn't know if Rose is real, but the, the reader knows that Rose and Liam are both real. So, then I have the sad character, Elena, and I try to personify her sadness by the woodlands and the ocean. So I had this dream of a page of poetry, maybe it wasn't a dream, maybe, it, maybe I accidentally deleted it, but it's so beautiful, and God said, well, the essence of it is just kept rewrite it more than once. So it was about the ocean. I was talk talking as if I was the ocean, describing it, and I lost that page. So either I dropped the scene, or I deleted the scene, or God deleted the scene, because I asked God to possess me and decide to let the novel be his novel. Because I write it, but my hand, my hand is possessed by God's hand. That's how I write. I let it come to me. But I've been diagramming for Hunger and Beautiful Man is how I'm working on Hunger as an outline chapter one, then I write chapter one, then I outline chapter two, then I write chapter two, and I have it all in a notebook. But anyways, focus on your description. Use a dictionary. A couple a couple days a week, open the dictionary to a page, write down some words that speak to you and write down what they mean. I have a dictionary I could show it to you, but it's all the way upstairs, so I can't. But buy a dictionary if you don't have one. Buy a thesaurus too. I, my, that's another thing I need to get. I need to get myself a thesaurus. Play with words. Do writing exercises. You can find them all over the internet. Work on building good poetic prose so description. But also be aware not to have too much description. Because I started reading this book called something like Tinker at Pilgrim Creek. Something like that. And... It has way too much description in it. There's no plot. It just describes the forest and this guy who lives in the woodlands. And it would be a beautiful novel if there was just more plot 
actual characters instead of just describing the world. It's good for the description part, but there was, there was nothing behind the characters. I couldn't get into the characters' head. I couldn't imagine the characters. I couldn't imagine the trees and the ground, but the characters were absent. So you need character development. But describe the characters in action and not in action. Describe what they like to do. Show and tell. Some people say show, don't tell. Some people say use some showing and some telling. Use your intuition to tell you when it's wise to show and when it's right to tell. Usually, you should use both in different times. One thing is having a long, long, long novel that's many pages isn't as good as having a shorter novel that speaks to the writer more. Sp speaks to the reader more. I accidentally said speaks to the writer more because some people write for writers. So it speaks to the other writer more. If you have product description, product characters, product plot. Now, plot is something that really, really, I'm not good at. So I felt like I read another book about an autistic kid, and he said, well, what is plot? Plot just means things happen. Nick calmed me down and said, yeah, I could write things happening. So I've had a boring life since my amnesia. So it's like, make things happen. So... I write my characters going to the beach, I write my characters going to the woodlands, I write them playing instruments, I write their sadness, I write their happiness. I write their sadness and their happiness in metaphors. That's where the description comes in. If a, if a character is sad, describe the ocean, how the, how the waves crash and pour, write how it's cerulean or teal or blue, stuff like that. Personify your sadness into something real in your novel, into a character. Put a part of you, your heart, into your novel. Work on it every day. Stare at the blank page, put music on, make a music track for your novel, and look at it every single day. If you want to take a break, go do some exercise, gymnastics, a run, lifting weights. Like yesterday, I couldn't do gymnastics because my family was home, so I just lifted weights did some basics, because you have to get good at the basics. You have to focus on the basics. I don't agree with plot diagrams, the whatever you call it, that you, that you learn in school. I don't agree with that. Um, I don't even remember what it is. That's like God telling me you don't need to worry about that. Climax, what happens after the climax, you don't have to worry about that. That's not a part of your story. What does, what do you want the readers to feel? What what do you want the characters to learn? What do you want to help? What what do you want to happen to the characters? So I don't like the idea of killing off characters because thou shalt not go. So I'm not going to kill off the characters. Some of them become minor characters and some of them become major characters. And you have to work on your minor characters and your major characters. So I have Liam. His little brother is basically a, a minor character, but even minor characters can shape the story. So yeah, describe the characters, describe the setting, but be wary of too much description. Use metaphors, use similes, use personification. There's more than just that. Let your heart narrate your story. Let your voice be profound and resounding. Let God's voice, let God's voice be in the story. If God wants you to lead a scene, delete the scene and write it the way he wants you to write it. So yeah, just just go with it. Don't worry about plot. Don't worry about a, about a climax. Don't worry about if, if there's a conflict. You have to keep the readers reading it. That's not the only way to keep the readers reading it. Some readers will, will sh shut the book if there's a conflict so big. For example, if someone, for me, for me, if a character loses a leg, I, I would instantly shut the book, rip it apart, or if it's the library book, return it, and, and put a book on here and say, please don't keep this book. Because I, it's personal to me, because I've had gangrene, God healed my foot, looking like one of my friends, Ryan Kelly, he's shapeshifted like Ryan Kelly, cleaned my feet, 
and told me that you can't say I didn't do anything with you. And I was like, thank you. And he also said that he'd smoke ganja with me. And she's so what was it? Huh? <laughs> so yeah. Let your characters breathe. Let them become real. I don't know what I was talking about, but just let them become real in your heart. Think about them. Meditate on them. Yeah, I lost my, my track, but it's okay. Work on your characters. Think like them. Be them. Breathe like them. Let them be healed. So, for example, I've had gangrene. I've had frostbite. Uh, yeah, that's what I mean. It's personal to me. If, if a character's leg was cut off, I would put the book down because I've had frostbite. I've had gangrene. I've had a needle in my foot, and the doctors wanted to amputate it. So my dad replaced him and did the surgery on my foot and removed the needle from my foot without amputation. And I have a, ma a, a little a tiny mass under my arm and in my breast, and I don't want them to cut my arm off, and I don't want them to cut my breast off. I want my breast to go away without surgery. Thank you very much. Because it's personal to me. So if I read, for example, in a book that someone lost their limb, I'd be terrified. And that's just a quirk I have. So think about the audience of your writer, of your, of your, of your readers. So I decided, I read mine over, my whole 236 pages, and I decided that the audience is probably poets and other writers. So I decided instead of calling it Beautiful Madness, I decided I would call it Beautiful Madness, Book for Poets. I might change it to Beautiful Madness, a book for poets and other writers. So yeah, just, just go out there and write. Take a break, walk around in the woodlands. Take a break, dance, swim, read other videos about writing, listen to music, be yourself, experience the world so you can write a plot. I have, make yourself experience the world, ask your parents to take your places and experience the world, experience every moment, think of every single moment, be conscious of every moment. And then when you come back to your desk, your table or your bed, you will feel like writing because there will be moments you could write about, you can craft it into someone else's memory. It's just, it's just really important to do things, to go on adventures, to give your characters adventures. That's it for now. Bye.